Hello history lovers and welcome back to the channel. Today for the spooky season, I thought that we would talk about the Guinness World Record holder for the most prolific female murderer ever with a claim of 600 and potentially more victims. That is of course Elizabeth Bathory, the Blood Countess. But did she deserve that record and nickname or has her name been smeared, much like our own Bloody Mary? Depending on how you interpret today's evidence, the Hungarian Countess Elizabeth Bathory was either a maniac serial killer or an innocent but powerful woman set up and betrayed by her family, like Juana of Castile. What I will say with today's episode, whatever the outcome, it is at times nearly impossible to separate fact from fiction with how her infamous story has evolved over the years. Bathory's alleged cruelty has gone on to inspire all sorts of media such as films, plays, TV shows and even video games. And of course, let's not forget Count Dracula. Before we start, let me know what your thoughts are about the Blood Countess and then we can see if your opinion has changed. And also, make sure you're subscribed. Elizabeth Bathory, the Blood Countess, was born on the 7th of August 1560 at the family estate in Nierbeteau to parents Baron George VI Bathory and Baroness Anna Bathory. It's kind of unknown how many siblings Elizabeth actually had. I've seen it claimed that she had all sorts, from just the one, called Stephen, to five siblings, to seven siblings. So I'm going to say we don't know. The Bathory family was a powerful Protestant nobility in Hungary, and Elizabeth's family members included barons, voivod, a palatine, a king, a prince, and a grand duke. It was through her father, George Bathory, that Elizabeth was related to the voivod of Transylvania who was essentially a semi-independent ruler, as Voivode Andrew Bonaventura Bathory was her father's brother, and therefore her uncle. Her mother Anna was sister to Stephen Bathory, he was King of Poland, Grand Duke of Lithuania, and also Prince of Transylvania, making the powerful Stephen Elizabeth's maternal uncle. As you may have picked up, on both her maternal and paternal sides, they have the surname Bathory, which means, yes you guessed it, they were related. Gross. This inbreeding has caused historians to believe that this may have contributed to her ill health and weak constitution. Elizabeth was raised at the family castle in Xid. It hasn't been confirmed if Elizabeth suffered from epilepsy, but she may well have. What we do know is that she suffered from multiple seizures. Bear with. Bear with. The first one is basically Wuch, and the second one is Bartosiewicz. Bartosiewicz. Back. Alexander Bartosiewicz of Poland's University of which shed more light on the Countess's ill health, saying, quote, Already at the age of four or five, she suffered with epileptic seizures, violent mood swings, as well as painful migraines. Elizabeth was apparently very beautiful, and as endowed with looks as she was with wealth and intellect. This may not surprise you, but the young Elizabeth had an enviable education. One that was suitable for the family who basically ruled the Principality of Transylvania. Elizabeth could speak several languages, which included Hungarian, Slovak, Greek, Latin and German. And the young girl had a passion for learning that would stay with her into adulthood. It is thought that Elizabeth would write to other nobles and inquire about borrowing their books. So presumably, she was quite the bookworm. So far so good, and no real hint of her being a serial killer. It is also said that Bathory was exposed to servants being brutally and routinely beaten, and, at the age of six, she went to a public execution. Now, part of me thinks this could be added to exaggerate her infamy as a killer, but also servants being beaten and going to public executions 
that was kind of just normal for that time period. If we go over to England for comparison, Queen Elizabeth I was on the throne. During this time, and as we know, the Tudors frequently held public executions. Anyway, I digress. It's also said that Elizabeth Bathory laughed at the sight of a man whose crime was stealing. He was sewn into the body of a horse, which, you know, that's a bit less normal for the time. Again, rather annoyingly, the next bit has contradictory accounts. The fact is, Elizabeth became engaged to Count Ferenc Nadasi, who was from another powerful Hungarian family, although less so than at Bathory's. Where it gets muggy is her age when she was betrothed. I've seen some sources say that she was 13, others say that she was 11. So, let's just say 12? Either way, she was barely a teenager. Around 1573, 1574, or at least definitely prior to her marriage, it is believed that Elizabeth gave birth to an illegitimate child. The father was of low birth. Her fiancé Ferenc found out and reportedly had the baby's father castrated and then torn to pieces by dogs. The child was a girl and given to a peasant family to bring up quietly and hidden from view. Now, don't forget, Elizabeth was Ferenc's social superior, which may explain that if this pregnancy did indeed happen, that he didn't call off the marriage because she was his social superior and was prepared to overlook her having a baby with someone else prior to their marriage. Elizabeth and Ferenc finally wed on the 8th of May 1575. She was 14, and because she was her husband's social superior, she kept her surname Bathory, and he added it to his name. An estimated 4,500 people attended as guests to their wedding at Katish Castle, which was given to Elizabeth as a wedding gift from her husband's family. The wedding, as you may expect with a royal wedding, was very extravagant and it lasted for three days. The young couple would go to live in castles in Hungary at Savar and Kajis, which is now in Slovakia. As we will explore in a little bit, Ferenc was often away fighting, so Elizabeth, who would have been far more than capable with her education, would run their estates while he was away. It is thought that while her husband was away, that Elizabeth took on various lovers, and she would go on to have four, or five, again, no one can agree on the number of children. However, there is no claim or concern that any of her children weren't her husband's. So again, was this rumour just added later on to slander the Countess? For the first few years, the couple didn't see much of each other. Elizabeth was overseeing their many estates, while her husband, who proved to be a great warrior, with the nickname the Black Knight of Hungary, was off fighting against the Ottomans. His absolute brutality in the face of the enemy terrified his enemies and shocked his allies. It is alleged that when they were home together, that they bonded over torturing young servant girls, and Elizabeth apparently was continued this brutality while he was away. It is also maybe assumed that Ferenc taught his wife how to torture people. After all, he was the Black Knight of Hungary, a name that put pure fear in people's hearts, as his brutality terrified enemies and allies alike. However, there is something else that I would like to bring up, one that is often overlooked, that Elizabeth was a woman who expressed concern for the difficulties that young peasant women faced, which is supported by letters that she's left behind. The Countess is said to have even intervened on occasion to assist those less fortunate where possible. But just because we have evidence of kindness doesn't mean that she's an angel or not guilty. The Turks invaded Hungary in 1591 and this led to what is known as the Long War, which lasted from 1593 to 1606. Like all wars, this one was expensive and would deplete the Hungarian coffers. Unlike others in Transylvania, Elizabeth Bathory would never fully feel the financial effect of the war, as her husband kept bringing back gifts from the Ottoman Empire. Just to emphasise her wealth, 
Elizabeth didn't feel the financial pressures of the war, and yet she still actually helped fund the Hungarian effort. If she hadn't lent the money, the Hungarian Habsburg Empire would have economically collapsed. During the Long War, Katish Castle, probably the one most synonymous with Elizabeth's murder spree, was threatened by the Turks, and Elizabeth had to defend her estates, which she did successfully. There is even an account where, when she was invaded by other nobles, she felt assured enough to make a threat back, stating, So, my good sir, you have done this thing. You have occupied my small possessions because you are poor, but I do not think that we will leave you to enjoy them in peace. You will find in me a man. I mean, the woman might be a serial killer, but you can't deny her strength and tenacity and competency as a warrior. But then, was she a murderer? During the war, she also gave refuge to desperate peasants, feeding and housing them. Was this a humanitarian act, or a ploy to lure more victims? So let's get on to her victims. At first, they were servants at her castle and daughters of local peasants. There was an accusation that the Count, her husband, punished one of their servants by taking her outside, took off her clothes, and covered her in honey in hopes of attracting insects to bite and sting her. It was said that the pain was so bad that the girl collapsed, so in order to revive her, oiled paper was placed in between the girl's toes and set on fire. It is not clear whether Elizabeth assisted or just witnessed her husband. It is also thought that he gave his wife spiked gloves to use. Elizabeth is also accused of stabbing victims, biting their breasts, hands, face and arms, cutting them with scissors, sticking needles into their lips or burning them with red-hot irons, coins or keys. Some were beaten to death and starved. There is also a myth that the Countess believed that if she drank the blood of virgin girls and bathed in their blood, she would preserve her youthfulness. However, the last bit I can tell you is not true and has been added to the legend of the Blood Countess. Elizabeth's victims range between the age of 10 and 14. In 1601, Anna Darvolia, also known as Darvulia, who had been a servant of the Nadasi family for years, joined Elizabeth's household and became part of Elizabeth's inner circle. It was rumoured that Anna was a witch and that Elizabeth's personality changed drastically when she joined the household. A servant claimed, The lady herself became crueler and crueler. Anna is often credited as the person who taught Elizabeth to kill, while Ferenc instructed her in torture. 1601 was also the year that Ferenc became unwell. Although the specifics of his conditions are unknown, it led to paralysis of the legs. A year later, a priest by the name of Istvan Magyari started making formal complaints about Elizabeth's antics to the royal court of Hungary. Magyari had become suspicious as Elizabeth was frequently asking local pastors to come to the castle to perform funeral rites for servant girls who, according to Bathory, had died of cholera. Magyari wanted the bodies to be exhumed to confirm his suspicions. His claims were ignored. But why? It could be because of the power that the Bathory family held or the fact that it was only servant girls disappearing. Another theory could be that he was a Lutheran minister seeking comeuppance on a Calvinist countess. It is reported that one priest, potentially Magyari, I can't back that up. After many funerals for an alarming cholera outbreak that seems to only happen at the Bathory Castle and nowhere else, called her aside and said to her, Your grace should not have acted so because it offends the Lord, and we will be punished if we do not complain to you and criticise your grace. And in order to confirm that my words are true, we need only to exhume the body, and you will find that the marks identify the way in which death occurred. Elizabeth was apparently outraged. She threatened him and with her powerful relatives, and then she stormed out of the church. On the 4th of January, 1604, Elizabeth's husband, Count Ferenc Nadasi, after having developed debilitating pain in his legs and being paralysed from the waist down, 
died. His death brought their 29-year marriage to an end. Elizabeth was a widow at 44. On his deathbed, the Count had asked Georgi Terzo to look after his wife. Her husband's death left Elizabeth vulnerable. The loss of her husband caused another change in Elizabeth, who apparently became more sadistic than ever. I'm not condoning it, but I can understand how the death of her husband had this effect on an already disturbed woman. But now she had to look after an extensive empire as well. After her husband's death, Elizabeth moved to Catiche Castle, and according to Tony Thorne, who wrote the book Countess Dracula, The Life and Times of Elizabeth Bathory, her reputation for her brutality became so widespread that local families started to hide their daughters from the Countess's service. With the local families hiding their daughters, and Elizabeth's servants, you know, keep being murdered, she had to begin luring girls from a little further afield. When Elizabeth had got bored of torturing her victims, she would fling their bodies over the castle walls to be eaten by wolves. Elizabeth, however, wasn't working alone. Of course, she had Anna Darvolia, a nurse called Ilona Jo, and her friend Dorka. The youngest member was a disfigured teen named Fizcock, and finally there was a woman named Cataline. Again, sources are conflicting here, like, kind of really regretting doing this video now because some sources say that Cataline was a washerwoman, while others say that she was Elizabeth's daughter. Maybe it's a case of mistaken identity, and that it was a washerwoman, but took one look at the name and thought it was her daughter who might have had the same name. I don't know, but this is what we're dealing with. The most sinister of the six was Anna and Dorka, who would apparently compete to see who could inflict the most pain in their victims. So those six were doing the actual torturing, but she also had other accomplices. Noble ladies Anna Velka, Judith Pogan and Sells, and others were said to have acted as girl catchers, finding new female servants. Allegedly, Catalin, who was supposedly her mother's favourite and youngest child, helped her mother at Castiche. She helped her torture two young girls prior to Catalin's wedding. The two girls were tortured and burnt and died during the marriage festivities. The torture would start once the servant girl makes the smallest of mistakes. If Elizabeth was present, she would fix an evil stare, yell, and then start slapping the girl. Any girls who made a mistake while sewing, such as missing a stitch, would be stabbed repeatedly in the finger with long needles. Girls were normally naked prior to the torture, and after sticking needles into their fingers, she would say, if it hurts the whore, she can pull it out. Now, to any normal person, this would sound like an invitation to remove the needle, but if you did, the Countess would cut the finger off. More often than not, the girls would be taken to a torture chamber where Elizabeth would let the other members of the Sinister Six do the torturing. It is reported that the pincers would be used to rip the girls' flesh, the insides were torn out, and there have even been reports of cannibalism being enforced. But how true this is, again I don't know. Due to the amount of bodies that were already in the ground, many of the girls had shallow graves in the castle grounds, which were then dug up by hungry dogs. By 1609, Anna Darvolia had died of a stroke, and Elizabeth's debts were finally beginning to mount. Her children were all grown up and married, and Elizabeth was probably suffering from empty nest syndrome. Elizabeth then decided to open up her home as a finishing school for girls of the nobility, which wasn't that uncommon. What was uncommon is that it is believed that the reason she opened this finishing school was because her lady steward, Erzy Majorova, who, like Darvolia, People thought that she was a witch. People believed that she had convinced the Countess that if she took the life of noble girls, her financial situation will improve. Unsurprisingly, the body count began to add up, but she couldn't dismiss the noble parents like she had with the peasants, and Elizabeth came up with truly awful excuses like one of the girls had gone crazy and killed the other girls before she committed suicide? 
Right. Killing the noble girls was ultimately her undoing. Killing serfs and servants, who indeed had fewer rights, was gauche, but not really illegal for a noble, says Rachel Bledsaw, or is it Raquel Bledsaw, who wrote a thesis on Bathory. Killing your fellow nobles, even ones of lower rank, was a far more serious problem, and not one that could be ignored. Some of the parents went as far as to appeal to King Matthias II of Hungary, who would get the Palatine of Hungary, Terzo, to lead an official royal investigation into the accusations against the Countess in 1610. But if you remember, on his deathbed, Ferenc had asked Terzo to look after Elizabeth, but Terzo's loyalty to the king outweighed his loyalty to his friend. Between March and July 1610, Terzo and his men interviewed 52 witnesses. But aside from a clerk, Andrea Samoggi, who had seen a girl with badly burnt hands, they were just repeating hearsay. Things did get better for Terzo. The castle warden, Benedict Vic Serdi, claimed that there was secret torture rooms. However, he had only ever heard cries of pain and the sound of a whip. He hadn't witnessed or seen any evidence of torture. Doctors, who had been called to the castle to tend to sick girls, said they had not seen any marks on their patients. But they were only allowed to see their faces, so that's not to say that there wasn't any bruising. Unfortunately for Terzo, none of the people he spoke to was an actual eyewitness of the torture. In August 1610, Elizabeth Baffery knew that she was in trouble, and she had heard about the investigations into her activities. Elizabeth showed up unannounced at the court in Einsberg, with the mother of one of the dead girls from her finishing school. The grieving mother testified to Terzo and King Matthias that her daughter died of natural causes, but her statement was ignored. Her appearance at court was also a reminder to King Matthias to repay his debts, as he had not repaid Elizabeth and her husband for funding the long war. And now that her finances were slimming, she wanted her money back. The Countess also served Terzo, who, did I mention was her cousin? She served him tea at Katish Castle, where she told him that one of the other girls had murdered the other girls because she wanted their jewels. Right. In the September, Elizabeth made her will. This document was more than just a will. It also transferred all of her estates and possessions during her lifetime. The will gave everything to Elizabeth's three surviving children, Anna, Catalin, and Pal, or Paul. The only thing that the Countess would retain is her wedding dress, which she intended to wear until my death. Her will meant that the Bathory Nadasi holdings would avoid confiscation. If Elizabeth was found guilty in court, Elizabeth was also aware that both her son-in-laws were already plotting with Terzo against her, so they could take over her estates. In October 1610, Elizabeth withdrew from the Nadasi family seat of Savar. She made one last bar trip with her daughter, collected her jewels, and then went to Kajis Castle. Meanwhile, Elizabeth had been corresponding with her cousin, Gabor Bathory, the Prince of Transylvania, in hope that he would rescue her if the worst was to happen. By December, Terzo believed that he had enough evidence to arrest Elizabeth. Terzo and King Matthias invited themselves to dine at the Baffery Castle. Elizabeth was reportedly nervous and tried to act the gracious hostess. Things were going well, until she served the men cake for dessert. Upon the first bite, both men began to feel unwell. Convinced that the Countess had tried to poison them, they left. Terzo returned to arrest Elizabeth at Cachis on the 30th of December 1610. Apparently, Elizabeth was in the act of torturing when he arrived. Although this is debated, what is certain is that they discovered a dead girl, and a severely injured but alive girl. It is believed that her lady steward and witch, Erzy Majorova, cast a protection spell to protect the Countess and to bring about the deaths of Messias and Terzo. Not a great plan. But that didn't work. Terzo and his men heard the sound of screaming 
which led them to the torture chamber, where they found the rest of Elizabeth's group. Terzo was convinced of Elizabeth's guilt, and she was taken into custody, where she claimed her innocence and blamed everything on the others. 306 people testified against Elizabeth, which included the other members of her murder crew. However, her accomplices' confessions were taken under torture, so the validity of their confession is questionable. The total victim count is between 80 to 650. Some of the ladies that testified against Elizabeth said how she would cover her victims in cold water and leave them outside to freeze. She would put hot metal against the girl's flesh. Some were even beaten to death. The severely injured but alive girl that they had found was named Anna, and she stated that the Countess did beat and hit her. But it was the castle warden, Benedict Benezeki, who had ripped her flesh. But Anna would later change her account, and now claimed that it was Elizabeth who had destroyed her right hand and arm. Terzo later gave Anna 50 guilders, 15 pounds of wheat, and a small farm. Both Elizabeth and King Matthias wanted a trial. Matthias wanted to secure her execution, and Elizabeth believed either that she was innocent, or that she could pull enough strings to get out of it. However, Terzo didn't want Elizabeth to go to court. Originally, he wanted to have her sent to a convent, but he changed his mind. Elizabeth would go directly to prison. Terzo had managed to talk Matthias down from wanting a trial, explaining that a public trial would bring embarrassment on the family. A family who didn't rush to Elizabeth's defence. All of the Sinister Six, apart from Bathory and Darvolia, who had already died at this point, were put on trial in January 1611. Death sentences were given to Ilona Joe, Dorka and Fisco. Ilona and Dorka had their fingers torn out with iron tongs before being burnt to death. As mentioned earlier in the video, Fisco was the youngest and deformed. As a sign of mercy, he was beheaded, and then his body was burned. Castle Warden Benezeki was put in prison, and self-proclaimed witch Erzi Majorova was charged with aiding and abetting the Countess by trying to kill Matthias and Terzo with magic. Majorova was burnt to death. Noble ladies Anna Velka, Judith Pogan and Sells, who had acted as girl catchers, were never convicted. Catalin, Elizabeth's daughter, was the only one who was not put to death. She had been the most soft-hearted of the bunch. On several occasions, she herself had been beaten for sneaking food into the victims. She was sentenced to life imprisonment. Ilona Joe reported that the Countess did indeed beat girls until they bled, so hard that the blood pooled on the floor and splattered the Countess's clothes. But when this happened, Elizabeth Bathory would change immediately. The servants would also wash away any blood on the floor. Elizabeth was never put on trial, and she was convicted and sentenced to life imprisonment at Cachis Castle. Her only visitors were priests and Terzo. It was reported that Elizabeth was unrepentant and crazed with rage. No one was able to get the Countess to acknowledge her crimes, and when asked why, she didn't order her accomplice to stop. She said that she had been afraid of them. Elizabeth was very hostile to Terzo, but that's understandable, as he was the one that put her there. On one visit to the Countess, Elizabeth demanded a trial, and Terzo refused. She then threatened him with Gabor Bathory as a dire consequence of his illegal actions. Terzo then responded, You, Erzabet, are like a wild animal. You do not deserve to breathe the air on earth or see the light of the Lord. You shall disappear from this world and shall never reappear in it again. Some suggest Terzo was trying to fulfil his promise to Ferenc Nadasi by having Elizabeth imprisoned or to spare her children the shame of a public trial and execution. However, he was ultimately protecting himself. Terzo was also able to get the Bafari Nadasi family to agree to cancel King Matthias's debts. The exact circumstances of Elizabeth's final imprisonment are unknown. However, Terzo ordered her bricked into a windowless room in Cachis Castle. 
a small space was left to allow the passage of items to and from the chamber. But other than a guard, Elizabeth Bathory was alone. Bathory's victims were hidden in a variety of places, but most of the bodies were secretly buried in church graveyards during the night. On the 21st of August 1614, Elizabeth complained to a guard that she had cold hands. He told her to lie down and get some sleep. She did, and never woke up. Elizabeth Bathory died at the age of 54. She was initially buried in the church cemetery at Kachis, but the locals weren't so happy with a mass murderess being buried there. So, her body was exhumed and apparently taken to the Bathory crypt. But when the crypt was opened in 1995, her corpse wasn't there. So I guess her next mystery is, where is she now? Since her death, Bathory has become a pop culture figure, inspiring literature and music. She is compared to Vlad the Impaler, and like him, is said to have inspired Count Dracula. Although arguably, Vlad had a bigger influence than Elizabeth. So, was Elizabeth a bloodthirsty murderer? Or an innocent woman framed? Leave your thoughts in the comments, or come check out my other video where I discuss this more. If you like this video, make sure to give it a like, subscribe to the channel, and share this video with a friend. But until the next one, have a wonderful day.